morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship this morning. It's the second Sunday in the uh, Pentecost season. And I want to encourage you to uh, fill out uh, your line in the red book. Okay? Just a very helpful thing for us to have to know who's been here and, and uh, more especially who's not, so that we can follow up, make sure all things are well with them. Uh, I'd like to, for you to take time now, greet your neighbor, say hi to everybody uh, around you, catch up on a little news if you need to, and when it's, uh, when it's time, I'll interrupt. So how's it been going for you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, oh, <laughs> wow, you got back in good order without my even saying something. Uh, I want to, I want to warn you and give you a, an apology in advance. Okay, today's my today my sermon is longer than what's typical for me. So if it just gets a little tedious, just know that's not my normal style. All right. Um, I want to call on our, our musician, and then I, I understand that Anne has some information. Where are you? Oh, right there. Um, then you have some information to share as well. So if you. Hello, everybody. Um, I uh, just wanted to let you know that I have a, a concert coming up that I'm giving in Seattle. Um, it's not too far north. It's kind of between Queen Anne. Um, so uh, I would really love to see some of you there. It's mostly opera, but it's also some, uh, I always like to say, but some fun songs too, but then I watch, I say that to my students, but I said, but opera is also fun. So, so more some English, English songs thrown in there, musical theater stuff, and, um, and some opera uh, with two uh, soprano friends of mine. So, um, so it should be a really good concert. Um, and that's coming up on June 15th, which is a Saturday, um, Saturday evening. Um, Church, which is um, there's a little little poster, purple poster of us up there, um, with, with my dramatic headshot. <laughs> so, uh, so I would love to love to meet you there. Green Ann Lutheran Church, you said. Green Ann Christian Church. Christian Church. Yeah, and your aunt. So you may have noticed when you came in that we gave you a little insert in your bulletin. And yes, Tom has a bad wife. Tom has a bad wife. <laughs> yes. So it's a survey. It's a congregational survey. And I know how you may feel about surveys. Because you go to buy gum at the grocery store and when you get home you get an email asking you about your buying experience. <laughs> and so I have taken surveys as a really opportunity to let everybody have to know how I feel about everything. Like why if all homes have stud widths of 16 inches, can you only buy grab bars in increments of 12 inches? Yeah, we should ask that question. Good, good. So I let everybody know about that. And then also why can't the hot dog people and the bun people coordinate the numbers? There's 10 hot dog buns and eight hot dogs. So it's a good reason to you know vent your frustrations. But this survey is especially important because it's going to let us know how we should move forward with the call process. 
So right now we are in the process of rewriting something called the transformational profile, which is our church's resume. It's saying who we are and what we believe and what we've been throughout the last several years. And uh, it lets a pastor know about us. And we want your opinion on this survey, which we try to make sure. So share your thoughts. So by the end of today would be great, but by next week too, if you need some time. And then you can either put those in the offering plate or you can work on them during Pastor Paul's very long. <laughs> 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 no, we're going to give you this in a um, But you can also give them to myself, Tom, or Tam. I appreciate your input. <clears throat> Yeah, having your fresh insights to share with uh, a potential new pastor is extremely valuable. Do take time and thoughtfulness, and thoughtfulness in putting down your answers. We're going to take a, a minute or two just to calm our hearts, and to focus in on what God has for us, the blessings of this day. Our first act of worship is confession and forgiveness. It's found on page one in our bulletin. And folks, we gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. God, our provider, help us to believe that there is an to share. We question your ways and they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We return to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and lead us to the right of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into the abundant life. Amen. We rise as forgiven people to sing that God might gather us. <laughs>
Thank you. 
is. Let us join our hearts together and let us pray. Almighty Creator and everlasting God, throughout our time, time you free and free and free us. heal the sick, and, and, and make all that you Look with compassion on the world moving by sin, and by your power, restore us the fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 5, and the name of the Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Lord God, live life. Thanks be to God. Please rise for affirmation of God. <laughs> going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, the disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, oh, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, have you never read that David did what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abathah was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for anyone but the priest to eat. And David gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, Jesus entered a synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. <coughs> and he said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save a life or to kill? But they were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out. And his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against Jesus, how they might destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated. Well, here I am. Here I am on the first Sunday of my bridge ministry, and what do I get to preach on? A commandment. A commandment. One of the big ten. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The third commandment if you're keeping count. And I get a gospel lesson in which all of the pastor types are the villains. <laughs> Already plotting to kill Jesus and it's only the second chapter of Mark. 
Well, let's launch into this, huh? What we have here is a wonderful commandment. A wonderful and radical commandment. It's a radical notion, this idea of resting. In the society of nomadic wandering and later in a culture of subsistence farming, the very idea of wasting one whole day, one whole day out of every seven days, why folks, that was that was crazy thinking. That was crazy thinking. It's a radical commandment. You know, in other ancient law codes, we find parallels to the Ten Commandments. They do have similar laws about honoring parents and not killing or lying or stealing. But none of them mandates rest. And as we look at the context surrounding this radical commandment, the first thing we know is that this is the only one of the ten accompanied by a rationale. In fact, we're given two different reasons why we should remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In Exodus chapter 20, it's because in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all the creatures that are in them, but on the seventh day, God rested. Obeying the third commandment, we're following God's example. And as you just heard in Deuteronomy chapter 3, by the way, you did a good job reading that, having forgotten about it. <laughs> well done. As you heard in Deuteronomy chapter 5, it's because you were slaves in Egypt. And the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Obey the third commandment because you know what it's like to slave away, to work and work and work without a break. You know what that's like. Both these rationales help us to understand the meanings in and behind this commandment. It's a radical commandment. And it's a wonderful commandment. Because when you have a relationship with God, what do you get? You get a day off. You get a day off, you can rest, huh? If you don't have a God, then it's all up to you. You get what you earn. There's no such thing as a free lunch. It's all up to you. No God, no grace. Just you and your skills and your ambitions and your energy and 24 short hours in days that fly by. No connection to God. And all there is is restlessness. But when you have a relationship with God, there's this wonderful affirmation. Rest now, says the Lord. I've got things under control. Throughout the witness of Scripture, there are Sabbath stories. And when Sabbath gets torqued out of shape, when it's used like a club to prohibit, rather than the affirmation God intends it to be, by then, Jesus straightens us out with this reminder. Huh? The Sabbath is made for humankind. Not humankind, but a Sabbath. And we have a pair of those Sabbath episodes today. Now let's be clear. On these two occasions, some commandments were broken. Hmm? In the first, the Sabbath objection is to doing farm work. First, they were harvesting grain. And if you grab a handful of raw grain from the field, you can't just eat it. First, you have to rub it in your palms and blow away the chaff. And that, folks, is threshing. And by any definition, harvesting grain and threshing grain is work. But that's not all. This wheat field didn't belong to any of them. They stole that grain, thus breaking the first commandment. Anybody? The uh, seventh. Hmm? Two broken commandments, and yet Jesus defends their actions with a Bible story, no less. 
And then on the second occasion, Jesus himself breaks the Sabbath commandment. Because any way you cut it, doing doctor duty is work. And he did it intentionally. He did it right in their face. Those with their silent accusations and stubborn hearts want this commandment to shake its finger at you. A prohibition. To which Jesus says, let's get our priorities straight here, huh? Sabbath is made for people, not people for the Sabbath. The Sabbath, this rest, it is God's gift to you. A positive, not a negative. A blessing, not a limiting. There is no prohibition in this commandment until you get down to three or four sentences deep. Huh? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Where's the thou shalt not? Hmm? It's vanished, hasn't it? It's not there. This resting is positive behavior, which God himself models. In the beginning, God did all the heavy lifting, making creation happen in six days, and doing a very good job of that. And on the seventh, God took a day off. God set the example for his creation and his creatures most especially for us creatures who are made in God's image. From beginning to end, the scriptures are concerned about us and our needs. And you need rest. The trouble is we don't know how to rest. The trouble is we're afraid to rest. The wandering nomad. I don't melt those Boats every day. There will be problems of plenty for me, huh? That subsistence farmer. If I don't weed the field every day, there will be no crop and we'll starve. If I don't, if I don't, if I don't. Even in this labor saving age of modernity, we slave away, working, working continually with no rest, never stopping. Slaving away. If you don't believe me, you ought to see my to-do list. I carry it right here in my pocket. Huh? You too? Yeah, you too. You too. We even make rest in the work. How many of you have arrived home from a vacation getaway and thought to yourself, man, I gotta go to work tomorrow so I can rest up from this exhausting vacation? We are experts at resting restlessly. It's all too often we find our, our self-worth, our inner value by being productive, by checking off the list, by getting things done by what we do, huh? When instead, the scriptures urge us to find our freedom and our value and our security in Christ. God says your, your value to me is in who you are rather than in what you do. So go ahead, says God. Waste the day. Waste the whole day. Waste one every week. You see, the key to this commandment is knowing who gives this rest and for what purpose. Rest we must. So God says this, take a day off because I can handle it. Your crops won't wither. Your sheep won't die. Your money won't run out. Just trust that I can take care of things. Trust that I have you in my hands. So have that. Take a break. And with that, God says something else. God says something else in this command. God says, make this rest holy rest. Because while you're resting, I'd like to have a word with you. I'd like to build a relationship with you. I'd like to give you the all-quelling, all-calming peace of my presence. 
in me, you will find the deepest rest of all. But no matter how still we become, this is not a peace that we can make for ourselves. It's not a mystery that we can pierce on our own. For the infinite cannot fully investigate the infinite. Pardon me, the finite. We, the finite, cannot fully investigate the infinite. And so while we're resting, God takes the initiative. God comes to us. In this moment of rest, in this time when all the to-do lists are set aside, when all of life's distractions are put on the shelf, God comes to us. He comes to us in word and sacrament. Yes, of course, God can come to us in many other ways. You might meet up with God when you're helping at the food bank. You might hook up with God serving at the soup kitchen. You might even experience God in a beautiful sunset. But God has promised to come to us here. To come to us here every time, every single time, in the water and the word, in the bread and the wine. Building such a relationship takes time, it takes talk, and it takes trust. Trust built on openness and honesty and self-disclosure with intimacy and vulnerability. And in this self-disclosure, God does very well. Because God is in the business of relationship building. So God does not hold back. God does not retreat from the vulnerability of love. God opens himself up to us and makes himself known. The Sabbath day is a time set aside for such divine conversations. God has a track record, you see. God has a history. God has stories to tell you, and some of them involve extraordinarily interesting individuals and life situations. And of all the incidents and interactions in the Bible, God most especially wants to tell us about the episodes of his son's life, how Jesus was born, what Jesus taught, what Jesus did. Tell us about his death and resurrection, and about what God is doing even now with all of creation through the risen Lord Jesus. I want to talk to you, says God. So you'll know my track record and you have confidence in me. I want you to know there is no grave so deep that I cannot find you at the bottom. There is no light so removed from my eye that I cannot seek you out and find you. And there is no darkness in your life that I have not already passed through. And I will be your light in that darkness. And even if you're in the back, huh, in the very last pew, I will call you forward when you need my healing. You see, God wants to talk to us in such ways that we can live in the freedom of the resurrection and in service to the cross. That freedom in Christ is the deepest rest of all. So take some time off. Catch your breath. Rest your weary bones. And when you rest, make it a holy rest. Listen for God. Because God will come, God will speak, God will speak a word to you, a word holding out God's deepest peace. And when you hear that word, you will know that you can rest and rest assured that God is in his heaven and that even now Jesus is raising you up.
to him is old living bread from heaven. It's found on page six in your bulletin. Please rise as you are comfortable and able, and let's sing together. <laughs>
Lord God, help your church, your people throughout the world to be your witness and light to your peace and hope and love. Lord God, Jesus told us he was the way, the truth, and the life. We would ask that your Holy Spirit would empower, inspire, and encourage your church and its people as followers and disciples of Jesus Christ to bring this message, to live this hope and reality so that there would be reconciliation, good news, and restoration in all that your church and its people are called to be, your faithful church, into the world and at this moment. Lord, in your mercy, God of all creation, you have called your people to be stewards, faithful stewards of all that you have created. As we look out into your creation, which you call good, it is bound to be hurting from mistreatment, neglect, a whole slew of self-involvement and desires as opposed to what you have given that good creation to all of us. Lord God, we pray that you would help us to be better stewards of the air and the water, the lands and the seas. Help us to be better caretakers of those things in our lives which we sustain and can sustain, which we do and can protect, and how we can make it better for all. Help us to see and to live knowing that all people are made in your image and you call very good. Let us be, be your light of truth regarding the care of people, those who are found to be facing prejudice and hatred, abuse, injustice, lack of good food and shelter, clean air and water, needed medical assistance, neglected, seemingly invisible in so many of our societies. Help us to be the cup of compassion, your compassion, your tender care, and your love. Lord, in your mercy, your yes. Lord God, we see the tragedy and the evil, the harsh realities of war and armed conflict throughout the world today. We pray and continue to pray for the end of war in Ukraine, in Israel, in Gaza, Haiti, Africa, and other places around the world of which we know. We humbly ask for your peace and restoration, healing and the removal of all walls of hatred and ignorance and ways of war. Please help us all to desire and endeavor to seek to take down those walls and replace them with healing, reconciliation, care, with humility. We ask that you would touch the hearts of all world leaders and those who seek to lead and govern their nations and peoples with your peace, that desire for well-being for all, your tender care upon all people, a hope and a light instead of hopelessness and darkness. Lord, in your mercy. Your purpose, Lord of compassion and tender care, we lift up those among us in need of your continued healing, and whose names we lift up at this very moment. Hear us as we lift them up. Are you able? We thank you for your presence in their lives and those of their families and friends and help during this time and challenges in each of their lives. Please be with those who are facing upcoming medical procedures, await the results of, of medical tests, are dealing with chronic ongoing medical conditions. Be with all who are experiencing physical, mental, and spiritual suffering. We ask your tender care and touch upon these brothers and sisters in Christ our friends and our neighbors, and those that we know in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. Lord God, you've called this church into being and given us a ministry and mission, 
ministries and missions to carry out in the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to be faithful to those ministries and missions throughout Federal Way and beyond. We especially think of our partnership with Fusions, the upcoming summer adventure camp, and those after school dinners. We are thankful to you for the opportunities you give to us to share your good news, your grace, with ministries that we've had over the years, such as to Decatur High School, and the wide world ministries given to us and led by our talented cultures and more. We pray, O oh Lord, for our church leaders as they lead us in, in our lead us as we seek to provide for a new roof and a parking lot in this project, as we seek new pastoral leadership, as we attend to the opportunities to share you into our neighborhoods and in, into our communities. Lord God, we ask that you renew us as we acknowledge you as the holy God of our lives and as we acknowledge that which you call holy, even this day, a Sabbath. Let us be renewed by not only acknowledging that, but living into it, and again, following that which you've given to us, your good gifts in so many ways. And this, and also much more, that we have on our hearts this day, we commit them all to you in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you also. And also with you. Please take time to pass the sign of the peace to one another. Peace. God's peace be with you. Yeah. Oh, oh, I we don't know. No, no, no. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. God's peace. Right? God, God's peace. God's blessings to Colleen, too. Thank you. God's peace. Thank you. God's peace be with you. Always go down the middle. It's nice to kind of not come down the side. God's peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Yeah, right. Yeah. Peace be with you.
table of bread and wine is now made ready. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a while. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Let us pray. Loving God, through your goodness we have the bread and wine to offer, which earth is given in human hands and made. May we know your presence in the sharing of this bread, so that we know we may know your touch in all bread, all matters. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community throughout the centuries, and share with us now. May one of Christ and one with each other we offer these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary. We should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Almighty God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. For on the cross and the grave and the resurrection, he has brought us to newness of life. And so, with all the choirs of heaven, with the earth and all its creatures, we share their unending joy. Jesus offers us new life. As we remember together that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, eat. This is my body given for you. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The meal is prepared. And it is God who invites. Come and receive it. Here at Christ Lutheran Church, we celebrate open communion, which simply means that if you're here today, you are welcome at the Lord's table. You don't need to be a member of this church, nor of any church. We take communion by intinction, so you'll be given a piece of bread, and you are invited to dip, either in the wine, dark color, or in the juice, which is the lighter color. We also have COVID-safe packaging and gluten-free wafers. So if you'd like one of those, please indicate it when you come forward. And if there's someone at home, someone in your life, who is unable to be here, we don't want them to go hungry either. Feel free to take communion to them as well. 
Come now, Jesus. All is well.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's ways. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from you and from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life and the good news of that life given for all. In your name, our precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please rise now for the blessing. May the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and gives us rest, sustain you now in prayer.
body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Sunday school classroom. Uh, I want to give everybody a time to get acquainted. So you can just ask questions, whatever you want to know. Um, I, what you see is what you get. So there, you, there it is. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about bridge ministry and what I'll be doing here. And then uh, I understand that the adult class on Sunday morning has finished up its book study. So I want to offer a, a couple of options for continuing study. If you're interested, okay? If you're interested. So, have a cup of coffee. Uh, no, no treats. I keep stuff. Uh, that's an awesome thing. And then, uh, in a few minutes, I'll invite those who are interested. Yeah, yeah, that was way too long. Never drink it.
more that's on my bed than there was on the last one. Uh, I know. 